So hello everyone. I hope you all are doing great and everything is groovy at your end. Today we are. This is the first day of. Uh, today we are having an introductory session of Azure and cloud. Today you can get started with your cloud journey. And today we are having an expert speaker, Shreyan J. So he will be talking about uh, the basic basics of cloud computing and everything. How you can get started with cloud computing. He can. He is here to share his journey about cloud computing. How he got started with the cloud and how has been his journey changed the cloud and everything. So let me introduce a brief about uh, the speaker. He is gold Microsoft ambassador, having a multi-phase personality in cloud architecture, having an edge after blockchain. So this is all about our expert speaker. So over to you, Shreyan. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot, Lakshit, for that. Yeah. So I'll keep the introduction when I'm going to the slides. So um, I'll just go ahead and share my screen now. Let me know if you can see the screen. Uh, yes, it's visible to us. Yeah. Perfect. So. I just put on the screen share mode. Yeah, perfect. So, hello everyone. Uh, as Lakshit said, my name is Shreyan Fernandez, and uh, sorry, currently a gold uh, ambassador. I'm sorry. I... So, currently a gold ambassador at Microsoft, and uh, I have worked in a startup before uh, where I was handling the AI section, and uh, I was also the president there. And currently, I'm interning at KPMG India as an analyst, and uh, I'm a hackathon enthusiast. So. Uh, I've taken part in various hackathons, be it from Microsoft and uh, various other organizations, uh, national and international level as well. And I'm Python MTA certified as well. And uh, yeah, I do occasionally write blogs and stuff. And I have delivered my sessions at uh, various global platforms like Azure Cloud Summit 2021 and uh, uh, many other conferences, AI student conference and stuff. So uh, it's interesting to uh, spread knowledge about tech any day, right? So, and my domains of interest line artificial intelligence, blockchain, uh, DevOps, web dev, extended reality, cloud computing, IoT robotics, and uh, power platform. So, currently, I work majorly on the sectors uh, that are related to blockchain um, and uh, extended reality. Um, so, those are my LinkedIn, uh, that's my LinkedIn profile. You guys can follow me there, and th that's the link to my GitHub profile. And uh, if you want to read my blogs and stuff, where do I publish them? So definitely check out the dev.to and uh, Shreyan 1999 is my uh, username. So you can read out the blogs there. I write about AI, blockchain, DevOps, and a lot of other interesting stuff going on. So that's about me. And uh, without further delay, let's just go ahead and see uh, what's the agenda for today? What are we going to do? What are we going to cover in this whole session? So firstly, uh, it will be a hands-on session for all of you. It it won't just be a, you know, like a, it's a theoretical session. I'll try to keep it more uh, practical as possible because I know uh, many of us uh, are already aware of all these things. Whatever I'm going to cover today, probably you guys already know this much better than me probably, right? So let's see how do we practically use it? Uh, why? Uh, why exactly are we using cloud? How exactly can we leverage that? And how can we go around, around working with a few things? Let's just see that everything. So what is cloud and what is cloud computing? The first thing that we'll be covering and then when is cloud optimal? Where can Microsoft Azure play a pivotal role? How can Microsoft Azure help us in development? And why Microsoft Azure? I don't know who the ta target audiences are, be it a student or be it a professional developer. Let's see how will Azure help us in all these phases, right? Uh, so firstly, uh, let's see what what is cloud and uh, what is cloud computing. So uh, when we say cloud, it's uh, it's it's kind of like you know um, a very vague term. Like what can I say? Clouds are when we were small, we just know what what are clouds, right? So clouds are those things what go on the um, in the sky. But eventually, tech term of cloud is not that. So basically, cloud is something that, you know, there are a couple of computing resources that are hosted in, uh, in other place where you cannot actually see. So, but you want that compute power. You want it to be delivered to you. So how can they deliver it to you? That can be done over the internet. And so in short, I can say that, you know, it's delivering the computing resources over the internet. Be it like, what are these uh, computing resources, right? Now one can ask me, what is computing resource? So be it your virtual machine, be it a serverless uh, infrastructure and, uh, and containers, like, you know, DevOps uses a lot of them. So all these things are delivered to you at your uh, home or at your office through internet. 
so this is basically what cloud deals with and this is what cloud computing deals with right so compute servers uh, are the network community machines that are located in an distant a distant data center so be it the data center hosted by many tech giants be it microsoft which has its own data centers and uh, in india there is the fourth new data center that's coming up and then there are storage databases uh, that are located on servers in the data center and uh, analytics and intelligence interact with the people in the natural way so basically uh, you can you can leverage any computing resource over the internet that's what cloud is all about and it's not just that now one can ask me like there are a couple of other options in cloud like what cloud to a layman is like basically you can store things somewhere right like for example google drive gives us 15 gb of storage space so what is that that also is a cloud that is a uh, application of the cloud right so but cloud is much more beyond that it is not just limited to storing things on the uh, in in a distant server but it is much more beyond that let's see how how is it much more beyond that in this session today so let before going ahead let's see how did computing evolve from that long time you know it's it's not just existing in like 4 5 years from now or something like that it was existent from a very long time and and the thing that we are seeing today the phase of computing that we are seeing today is just a uh, you know it is it's a development of probably a century i guess so let's see where did it start from so initially there were all mechanical things i know and then in 1877 came the grand calculator and uh, then then the evolution of electronics started this is where the technology started started to take a huge turn here right so at and t order in 1939 and then shaky reasoning robot came in 1969 in fact this term artificial intelligence is also not something very new or came up in a decade or something but it was actually in the dartmouth conference that it actually came to existence or it actually came to life so there's a huge history of ai but i won't get into much details of that that would be something you know out of the scope today but let's see how computing evolved so after that gui graphical user interface came in the year 1981 and by now the computers were already making its way to the tech field and they were extensively being used and then in 1992 sphinx voice recognition came in and then wham self driving car in 1994 so and after that probably in i guess in in this 90s itself so microsoft azure came to existence yes you heard it right so it is not something that came in the previous decade or something it came in the 90s itself so initially this was called as uh project red dog so yes that, that's that you heard that right so initially microsoft azure was called as project red dog by microsoft and uh, then when when it came back in uh, i mean recently in i guess 2012 or 2014 it was changed to microsoft azure so before that the word azure existed in 20, 2001 if i'm not wrong but it was called windows azure or something i'm not exactly sure of what the term was but yeah initially it was called red dog and and now it, it was actually called as project red dog that was a code word probably and now it is known as widely known as microsoft azure and and it is being probably used by a lot of them there like you know many tech companies are going the big fours and uh, there are a lot of other tech companies that are using this as well they're leveraging the services from microsoft azure so let's see what is the way ahead from here so i mean this pandemic has taught us one thing that yes the data can be generated enormously and uh, one best example for this is the microsoft teams which was very hardly used before you know uh, this lockdown schools never used teams and there were a lot of other things right but but schools never used teams colleges never used teams but when this pandemic hit us we weren't sure but the, the only way to was to go completely virtual completely online even the Con even the place where we are sitting today, we are virtually conferencing here and a lot of data is being generated. So, of course, the data that is being generated is going to be huge again. This is just the start. So, again, the way ahead from here would be something about the big data, the compute power. And, and we need, when, when the data is increasing, so definitely you need more and more powerful algorithms to process all this data. So, that is the way out there, you know, AI is going to play a major role now and, and, and a lot of things are going to happen. But this is how the whole computing system has evolved. And again, the best part is the second the second point that you can see here, the compute power, right? So when the data is increasing, you need a lot of compute power. But again, of course, there is no need to worry here because all such compute power for you will be delivered by the respected uh, tech companies. Like, for example, Microsoft Azure, it is every day 
upgrading itself to you know not have a breakdown or anything as such so they are they are maintaining the data centers according to the standards of the today's uh, need so now let us see why exactly should i prefer cloud of course there are a lot of other theoretical things that you know uh, there are different types of cloud there are different types of servers and i'm pretty sure all of us might be knowing this very well so the public cloud the hybrid cloud the private cloud and and lot of stuff like that but now let's see why exactly should we prefer cloud right this might be a question oh why cannot i do it on my own why should i prefer cloud yes so that is that's what we are going to see here the firstly the security so if you are going to have your own uh, like let's say system setup so initially pro um, a few years down the lane so you had to set up everything on your own if you had to host your own website so you had to give the necessary servers that you need the necessary cooling systems that you need and most importantly the security that you need right but with the cloud with the advent of the cloud and with more and more users going into this atmosphere of cloud so this thing has somewhere come down you know the security part is being handled by these companies again so there is no need for you to worry about oh will my will my data be you know like uh, tampered or will is it under risk so you're giving it to someone okay is how can microsoft uh, guarantee about my data right so there is no need to worry absolutely because they have definitely the world class infrastructure when it comes to security so they they are doing their best there and next comes the privacy again the term is self explanatory the privacy is also stored and then comes the high availability let's say if you are having your own uh what can i say a small server at your home and uh, now let's say there's a power cut or if there is if there is any other uh, thing what what can we say the internet is down right so what will you do uh, well very evidently your website is going to be you know not working for the next couple of hours till your uh, things are restored back to normal right so that is an issue because let's say your website is something that is very popular and uh, uh, and you can't uh, what do you say you can't actually tend to lose any customers in that way so that's actually a negative side uh, you know because you are you are handling everything and you are doing everything but again um, because of some issues your website is going down and you're losing your reputation that is something that you cannot tend to do so keeping this in mind microsoft has actually taken care of everything and the data centers are never shut down trust me they never shut down and uh, the resilience is perfect and everything is great here so your high the availability of those servers is with to the mark right so there are a lot more other things which i'll probably leave a link at the end you guys can explore more on why exactly is this the reason there are a lot of other factors if i say it will probably take the whole session out here so i'm not going into the depth of that but of course i'll leave the link at that and then the scalability this i'll take a very simple example here let's say uh, any any e-commerce website right any xyz e-commerce website uh let's say i'm having a traffic today like let's say there are 10 people who are accessing my website but now suddenly what happens i put up a sale on my website the e-commerce site so very evidently that uh, when you put up a sale there are going to be a lot of discounts and stuff and people are going to rush to that and your traffic might go to like what 100 120 but your server is only capable of doing 10 people at a time right not 100 so what happens at that time if a lot of people try to access the site so beat any results site usually this happens with the uh, exam results site right so if there are a lot of people who are trying to access that then definitely um it's going to crash right it's going to crash every single time and again that is not good for the reputation of the website so what can we do what is the solution here so when the traffic increases imagine the cloud scales it again right the cloud kind of uh, um scales that according to the traffic that is coming in that's exactly this is an example that i gave you uh, of e-commerce website this can be any other thing as well but again when it comes to cloud your uh, um the compute power is increased according to the incoming traffic or whatever the other factors are so that's how you can get a easily scalable website here and of course when the traffic goes down you can again put it down everywhere so this is what we mean by scalability it is highly flexible highly scalable and and you the best part is I, i'll come to that next when it comes to cost so it is a pay as you go model like let's say um there is an th this is the best example for pay as you go so like let's say there is uh there are these respective departments who in every state in india 
which actually gives you this electricity like they deliver it to your home so you just pay for what you use right you don't pay for the entire electricity that is being generated you just pay according to the units that you have consumed per month so similarly that same logic is applied here as well so you just pay for whatever the computing resources that you have used and not the whole computing resources that is available so now again that leads me to the next point that is lower cost the costs are pretty much low here because um okay let's take this example you you are setting up your own uh, data center oh, sorry not the data center the server so now there are two types of costs that i can talk about here one is called the capital expenditure the another one is called the operational expenditure so firstly speaking about the uh, capital expenditure so that is something like a one time investment right so the server uh, infrastructure for example the the whole machine the whole setup that you get right and uh, uh, along with that the other things like be the cooling system or be it the electricity uh, part or or something like that which you do just once so i can put this under um, capital expenditure that is something you know uh, the first part and then the next part is the operational expenditure so the amount of electricity that you have to give it and the amount of uh, uh what do you say the maintenance that you do every time you know there'll be wear and tear definitely there'll be wear and tear when you are using any electronic device or any electronic things right so there'll be a wear and tear so you will have to fix that every time so all these things so to keep that system running whatever the cost that you incur are uh, that comes under the operational cost so of course here both of them are pretty high because in the first place you have to get the infrastructure you have to install that and then you have to do all the necessary things the cooling must be great because of course use your laptop for like 10 hours continuously a laptop gets heated up so imagine that is the fate with a single laptop imagine keeping up the servers piled up and then so imagine the heat that is being produced and if you just keep it like that that's definitely a uh, bad side for that right so it will just get heated up so of course so the costs are pretty much high if you are not opting for cloud and the costs are pretty much low here if you are opting for cloud and not just the cost your it's a hassle free solution for you there is no need absolutely no need for you to sit and see oh, whether it is going down or you there is no tension at all like you know there is no stress zero stress because the all stress of yours is handled by microsoft at their data centers so this is these are the benefits of the cloud uh, in a very uh, short term right so these are all the benefits that any cloud provides but of course microsoft azure is also a cloud so that is also the thing so now let's see what does microsoft azure again provide you specially what are the things that they have so of course in security and management when it comes there is security portal i'll just show you a security center and i'll just show you what is azure portal then there is active directory key vault marketplace and and lot of other stuff so i'll just show them to you uh, through the demo right now after this uh, thing so media and cdn there are a couple of media and cdn services there is integration so all this comes under as platform services as i said there are infrastructure as a service platform as a service soft software as a service so there are different other things so what let's see what comes under the uh, platform as a service right platform services that are offered to you so the, there is data you know when it comes to data there are this databases what have we have azure cache for redis and table storage azure search cosmos db a lot of other databases then when it comes to intelligence this is something that you know i am a big fan of of microsoft azure because the intelligence services that they give like beat the bot service the bot frameworks i i'm pretty sure all, many of us must have heard it by now right the bot frameworks and the cognitive services it's a stack the cognitive services is just a uh, name you know there is uh, this is a huge uh, thing there are a lot more other things that are there under cognitive services let's see if time permits we'll see that as well and then there is azure ml studio but of course the azure ml studio is being retired in 2024 by microsoft but there is a way out for that which is called as azure ml service it has something called a studio designer so probably you guys can go ahead and use that the best part of azure ml studio is there is no need to code anything as such you know when when i say something about machine learning or when i say something about data science the first thing that comes to your mind is oh that that involves a lot of coding right so i need to be better at coding in order to get that uh, uh, model up and running or something like that so yes now those days are gone you know you can do it even without coding 
so how well azure ml studio is your solution there so i mean you can try till 2024 then then migrate to the next studio designer part but of course uh, it's it's no longer a dream that you know you have to be a you can code a mod so you can run a model with without coding so yes that is possible now you can you can run your own models uh, without coding a single line of code and all thanks to azure ml studio so you can try that out as well and then there is comes there's some other side here which is called as analytics and iot where you have uh, again stream analytics data lake storage and iot hub iot hub is a great platform if you want to use for any telemetry uh, related application especially when you're working with iot i guess iot hub is a decent uh, and a very great platform you can use event hubs is also same thing power bi i think many of us are familiar with and then the developer services here is i of course visual studio code is found in every single developer's uh, laptop right visual studio visual studio code and everything and then there is azure devops which i think companies use a lot any huge tech firms use that a lot mobile engagement zamrin is again uh, like like flutter I, i i'm pretty sure many of us must have heard about flutter and things like it's a cross platform development for mobile application so similarly xamarin is an offering from microsoft i would suggest you all to go ahead and try your hands on xamarin it's a great uh, sdk you can use and then application platform there are mobile apps you can you can host your web applications and uh, functions app which is actually a serverless uh, application which you can use and then there is service fabric then lot of other application platforms and then when it comes to compute services this is what you know uh we initially defined cloud computing as so what are the compute resources that are available so there is vm scale sets virtual machines and stuff so and then there's azure batch container services and a dev slash test lab and then if you want to have any integrations right you want to create your own apis and and link it to something you know you want to create your own api but you don't want to code again right if you want to avoid coding and if you want any designer so of course azure logic apps is a great platform for you to do that and then there's api management service bus but i would definitely show you around how actually an azure logic app looks like but uh, again it's a great platform if you want to create your own apis let's like, let's say a simple api if i take an example get and post api right i have to create a one get api and a post api to a simple database so how do i do that so definitely uh, azure logic apps is a solution for you definitely apart from you can do the same with functions app as well but of course you need to write a little bit of code here and there to do, to get that happening but azure logic apps trust me zero coding and you can get it done of course there if you want some uh, more modifications to your thing so definitely you can go ahead add a uh, thing there and code but of course i have done many tasks with azure logic apps even without writing a single line of code right and uh, then the infrastructure services are again compute services also are there which are not the ones that come under platform but they are purely under the infrastructure services in in that you can say virtual machines containers and azure kubernetes and then there is storage blob queues files and disks and then there is networking as you can see and then below that comes the data center infrastructure how it is i'm pretty sure how we must all have seen how a data center looks like so without further delay let's see how i have leveraged uh, azure in my own projects so this was one of the projects that i had worked with initially so this was actually kind of um, a real time tracking of a uh, of a bike like let's say there is a bike going on the road and i want to track this was specially built for the racer uh, motorsports so let's say there is a, a bike race that's going on and uh, Uh, and we have seen that a lot of racers lose their life as well in 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 the uh, while they are racing right so how do we control this that was the solution uh, that was the question and then we we came up with a solution where you know we had fitted sensors onto this bike and we created a digital clone of the same and uh, we started streaming the values like let's say tie up the psi of the tire right the that was also being streamed and it was shown on a, on a website where there was a 3d model of the bike and then it was showing yeah this is the psi uh, currently you are maintaining and then uh, what is the battery level what's the fuel level and and many other parameters so how did i do this using the micro and this was totally built on microsoft azure so let's see how did i do that so firstly a https request was sent again to the web app and there was this backend server again 
uh, that was hosted on Azure. And uh, there was, again, a HTTPS communication here. And the, as I said, the top one, the event stream, the one be, be above that, that was the IoT hub that we used. So from the sensor, the data was streamed to the IoT hub. And from there, it was streamed to the backend server. And from the backend server, it was coming to the uh, web app and where the 3D model was integrated. And it was going to the right place where the holder was placed. So this is one of the sites. Now, let's say we wanted to analyze it again. We wanted to you know, see how, how can we... Uh, how can we analyze the data? So again, to do that, we had used uh, stream analytics and then a couple of other services, as we can see here. And then finally, we had streamed it to the Power BI, uh, where we actually could see how was the graph in real time and a lot of other things. Of course, we had to store it somewhere. So we had used a storage service from the infrastructure thing I showed you here below right the blob storage or the disk storage the queues that comes under the infrastructure services so we had used something from that part to store the data that was being generated so you know uh, this did stored data might uh, you know for any other further data analysis or something like that so we had to store it as well so this is how i purely used microsoft's technologies microsoft tech stack to get this done so this is uh, the another uh, project that I worked on. If you guys want to follow this particular project, so it is available as a learn module on Microsoft Learn. It's called Building Intelligence, Intelligent Bots Using Azure Health Bot. I've authored four modules in that. So this is, you can find the same picture in one of the module where you are actually trying to integrate the bot to a database. So how did I do this um, using Azure? Right. So there is a platform called as Azure Health Bot. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this. So this is a platform especially for uh, conversational bots. You can build a lot of conversational bots, especially for healthcare services. A couple of uh, healthcare services that are already using this are, for example, let's say Aurora Healthcare Service and, and a lot more. CDC, I guess, Center for Disease Control and, and a few more are using the Azure Health Bot already. So let's see. So there was this data connection uh, call that I had to do which actually sent the data that the user inputted from the bot to this particular logic app. So this was my API now. So this API, what it did, it was able to post the data and also get the data from the SQL database. So again, the SQL database was hosted on Microsoft Azure, which uh, cannot be directly accessed, but of course there's a server related to that, the so SQL server. So it went through that pipeline and finally I was able to retrieve the data or even to post the data to the database. So again, the way I have built this connector or that particular logic app, right, without even writing a single line of code can be, of course, found in that learn module. I would uh, leave a link to that later on at the end. So yeah, this is how I leveraged Microsoft Azure again in one of my project. Uh, yeah, so this was another project that I worked on using uh, blockchain. So let's see how did I do that. So I don't exactly remember what project was this. So this was from some other project that I had used. So there was this GoCorum service. GoCorum is a mm, offering. Uh, you can find it in the marketplace. I'll show you what marketplace is in, in some time. So from there, I had to deploy an, a specific workbench and then the data was sent to the backend server. So there is a buzz in the uh, tech field today that, you know, Web 3.0 might soon hit us, you know, and then the backend might change. And then we are spreading, we are going towards metaverse and a lot of other things are going on. So I just try to work around with this blockchain, keeping blockchain itself as a database. We try to, you know, implement uh, this thing into the project. So there was a custom vision model for, I guess, scanning something. So custom vision is, again, a small part that comes under the umbrella of cognitive services. So I'll show that to you in a while. Yeah, so this is the whole thing of the project. So there was a map service as well, which was again used from Google Map API. And then I had used Azure Spatial Anchors and uh, custom vision was used for scanning. So this is a recent uh, application that I had built. I guess that was for Azure. So let us see whatever we have seen so far. I'll just give you a brief introduction of what Power Platform is. Because since we spoke about uh, zero coding, right? Any any one of us here who are not a you know not a fan of coding or and they're still interested in doing some great apps 
you know you can definitely go ahead and check out this something called as microsoft uh, power apps so as the tagline says it's less code and more power so there is absolutely no need to code much here of course there might be a minimal coding involved but you can you can build an app like special, at least i have built an app a mr based app mixed reality based app without coding a single line of code everything was a single simple drag and, and drop interface so par platform is again a huge umbrella there are four sub divisions in that par bi par apps par automate and par virtual agents and uh, yeah there are a couple of connectors that you can leverage ai builders and common data services so okay let's come back to this later so without further delay let us just jump into uh microsoft azure so if you are new to this so definitely you have to go to portal.microsoft uh sorry portal.azure.com and uh, log in with your credentials if you are a student by any chance so you'll have $100 free uh initially when you sign up you'll get $100 free and then you can try um anything that you want so as i said in the presentation as well it is a pay as you go model and uh, so of course some of the services are actually charged chargeable so you need a couple of credits for that but since i am a microsoft student ambassador we get uh, some credits uh, per month allocated to us so i am using it with that uh, thing itself so now let's say you uh, want to create something like let's say um a simple custom vision uh, thing okay so how do we go ahead and actually create one so usually they show you with the website even there's a learning part that shows you with a website so with i thought always the websites are shown let's see uh, what else can we do with this how can we deploy other things so if you want to create anything it's called a resource here in in terms of microsoft azure it is called a resource so if you just go ahead and click on create a resource you can see all the available resources that are uh, here right so there are a couple of categories here as well uh, it says ai plus machine learning analytics blockchain compute containers databases developer tools so i guess we have we are now quite familiar with all this because we saw the same terms coming up in the ppt as well so developer tools we had just seen what were they and there are a few more of course and uh, then devops has these many services identity uh, integration i said logic app the apis that you can use right so that is again here so there is custom connector if you want to build something so that is also available and then there is iot what does iot provide with you right there are a couple of things that iot provides you and then there is it and management tools for automation and stuff you can definitely again come to azure then there is media migration mixed reality which is again a huge uh, thing today so you can try it out as well it is also available on microsoft azure i have personally used spatial anchors for one of my recent projects where i built a navigation system like i know pretty much of us have heard of this game called as pokemon go which was totally built on um, you know something on on these concepts on these lines so what i did uh, we created a simple app again and uh, it was used to navigate around and it used to show you a marker that yes you have to go straight take a right just like the way you know any other map shows like you have google maps that uh, tells you okay you have to, uh, let's say I, I put a uh, destination then it shows you you have to go this way there's traffic here you might reach at this time there are these many kilometers remaining from your destination to this place so in real time so something similar to this we had done it in in uh, mixed reality so you have to just hold your mobile and then it would you have to just put in your location and that would take you all the way like let's say you want to go from uh uh for example in your house i'm just saying this is a very vague example let's say you want to go from your room to the kitchen okay you want to get some cookie so what you do you can let's say you don't know your way to the kitchen which of course i said it's a very dumb example but still uh so you can just put in that um thing that you want to go to kitchen and you hold your mobile and along with your mobile it shows you green marker okay it says yeah go in this way or uh, you can even insert a 3d model which will tell you that yeah uh come with me i'll show you the way and then it will walk along with you all the way to your destination and then once your destination is reached right and it will tell you that yes your destination is it this is where you wanted to come and the time taken and everything again will be shown of course i did everything whatever i've told so far was done using spatial anchors this was something i called it as internal navigation internal navigation using azure spatial anchors so this is one of the application but there are a lot more other features that you can use 
then there is monitoring and diagnostics uh, networking security storage and a web a web app functions app functions app is again on again a serverless compute option that is available on microsoft azure and app service environment api management azure cognitive search communicate communication services web pub sub uh, pub sub is basically publish and subscribe thing and azure spring cloud so there are a lot of these uh, things that you can see so now let's say we want to create uh, what was the thing we were supposed to create yeah a custom vision api so i think before that i'll i'll just show you what cognitive services means okay so i said cognitive services is a huge umbrella under microsoft's azure right um, sorry yeah so microsoft cognitive services microsoft azure cognitive services has actually these five main uh, divisions that is one is called speech one is called a language one is called a vision another one is called decision and finally it's called open uh, ai so apply advanced language models to a variety of use cases okay so this is a recent release from microsoft earlier this wasn't there instead of this there was something else but now this is added as well of course microsoft azure gets updated on a regular basis so uh, i mean this just happened with me so a month ago not even a month i guess 15 days a week ago i tried working on a project with blockchain and uh, then after a week i guess on this monday the three days back two days back i again tried to do the same thing but i could see a lot of changes that had happened from the time i deployed it before to the time i work now so there were a lot of changes there were a lot of uh, a new updates that had happened so why did i say this is because it's not sure that what you did once sometime like let's say two three months ago might be the same even today it might be definitely no doubt but there are high chances that that might have been updated to something else you know a lot of more features must be added to that or anything like that right so that is that and uh, decision a uh, decision has anomaly detector i know many of us must be uh, who work with ai must be very familiar with this term what is anomaly detector content moderator is something you know like a project that we used to do so twitter uh, sentiment analysis and stuff so you can do it with some content mod uh, uh, moderator here if there is any offensive language then that will uh, definitely search it uh, for you and tell you yes that this is offensive you cannot use it and then there is personalizer and you can create something you know a personal experience for every user so that is again a great thing you have to explore around so computer vision under vision the first thing that we have is computer vision analyze content in images and video there are a couple of small demos associated with this i'll show you, show you how to do that and in this custom vision this is what i'll be creating one and showing you today how to create a custom vision and of course this is a free of cost there is a free tier as well so you can use it uh, with free tier uh, too if you just have a subscription you're good to go go ahead create you'll be not you'll not be charged for this of course there's another tier in this called standard i'll just explain what are tiers um uh, custom vision customize image recognition to fit your business needs uh, face api is again let's say you want to uh, identify em emotions on people face right on and on, on a person's face so what you can do you can run this api it will show you what is the accuracy with which it can predict that he's sad or he's happy or what are the emotions in his face Right, and then there is custom. Well, for the language, there is I think um, conversational language understanding. Uh, Lewis is something that you must have heard about, and question answering, sentiment analysis. Um, like let's say I I write a text like let's say alas something happened. So that is something I'm I'm saying out of you know uh, sadness, right? That is it's not a very happy expression. So alas is the key word there. So something like that. These things are already trained, and you can check that out as well. And there is entity recognition. for common use and domain specific terms again and speech has speech to text text to speech i am pretty sure all of us must be knowing this cortana and stuff are already available and then the speech translation you can have a real time translation and then speaker recognition as well so now let's see what is this yeah so here this is a demo for computer vision okay let's choose something else mm yeah i'll i'll choose this okay this is something uh, that is found on any uh, let's say you get a chips packet and then you can find this or you know a chocolate bar you can find this at the back of that particular product right so but let's see what has this particular thing analyzed so there is text there is screenshot it's a newspaper is it a typography or is it a document so it has 
given you a couple of scores here right it's 99% sure there's text of course there is text humans can understand it better but let's say how computer analyzes it all right so is it a screenshot yes it looks like a screenshot it is 95% sure is it a newspaper because newspapers are usually in black and white so it is 88% sure that it must be a newspaper but it is not it's fine okay so is there a font yes there are fonts in this is it a document it is 18 percent sure it's a document because it doesn't look like a document in any case so it has shown a couple of other things as well here so this is how it does let's say with other example okay so i'm just must be the change you wish to see in the world everything has its uh something that i cannot read okay i see as a human i cannot read there's something here Okay, everything has its dash, but not everyone sees it. Okay, now I'm training, I'm giving this to my computer vision thing. Okay, I've created a resource and I'm giving this to my computer vision resource. Now let's see what does it come out with that. Okay, so status succeeded, of course, right? It's true uh, recognition results. Uh, now the results start. There's a bounding box. I'm pretty sure what is a bounding box. Uh, you must all be aware. So basically, when you give something to an algorithm, it basically puts this green colored boxes around and then says, where is it located? So that, that's what it is doing here, the bounding box. And in which bounding box, uh, what has it found, right? What is its finding? Mm, yeah. So wait, uh, let me see. Here it hasn't found anything. In this text, it has found you must be the change you. Okay, this is the first bounding box it has identified. Okay, that is a text it found. In in this bounding box, in this region, it found this text. You must be the change you. So then again, the next bounding box, it, it just found you somewhere. Okay, and then must. Okay, and then it's going on splitting. Uh, this is the main bounding box. Again, it has subcategorized it into, you know, like you is a different one. Must is a different one. B is a different one. The is a different. So that's what it is showing me here. And then again, it goes to next bounding box, wish to see in the world. Again, of course, the next part would be it will subcategorize this again. So that is what it is doing here. And everything has its beauties. Yeah, see, the word was beauty. I couldn't read it here clearly, but the word here was beauty. Okay. So again, it this is the next bounding box. Again, subcategorize and then show me. So finally, what is a preview that it should show me? This is what the computer understood. Right, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Everything has its beauty, but not everyone sees it. So this is how powerful this particular tool is, or this particular resource is. So you can literally give anything. This is a blurred picture. What can you see here? A metro, uh, some two people going, but it's very much blurred. You cannot see it clearly. But this this particular thing has seen something here, right? Let's say what has it identified? Uh, there is a train. Of course, it's a train it's a subway station. And uh, land vehicle, because train, of course, is a land vehicle. It's a subway train, right? I'm sorry. It's a subway train. There's a person here and there is another person with the bounding box. It's telling you, okay? And a vehicle and stuff. So name is train platform. So these are the tags it has given. So train platform, station building, indoor subway track, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So people waiting at a train station. This is what it is finally able to comprehend, right? Your model has comprehended from this picture that there are people waiting at, uh, waiting for a train at any, like, let's say train station, which is quite, uh, right. Right. So there are people here who are waiting here and then there's a train passing by. There might be other people who are waiting here as well. So it is just saying you that it's a people waiting at a train station. So see, it is able to come up with its own thing. It can tell you what the situation is. So this is how powerful computer vision API is. Then let's say this is something that we are going to create now. So I'll just show you what exactly this is. Mm, I don't think so. There is anything. Okay. No issues. We'll create one. So to create any resource, uh, okay. Before that, I'll tell you what resource groups are. This is very much important to uh, understand what exactly, uh, why should you exactly, you know, go ahead and have them. So let's say you're working on a project. Okay. So your project requires something from IOT, something from like, let's say um, AI, something from let's say database and a couple of API uh, handling platforms like uh, logic apps and stuff. So what do you do? So you're not just working on one project. Let's say you're working on 10 different projects or like let's say three different, 10 is very big number. So let's say you're working on three different projects. So now 
there might be a chance that you will be confused of what exactly is the resource that I created for which project. So what Azure does for you is it creates something called as a resource group. So this resource group, you can consider it to be like a bucket and you can put a name to that. Okay. So there is a bucket in which you put, okay, uh, I'm working on project number A, sorry, project A. So project A has um, logic app, project A has AI related service, project A has some something else. Okay. So you keep it together and keep it aside. Now your project B has like, let's say something related to blockchain, something related to IOT and a virtual machine. So that is project B. So now there are two uh, and project C has something, another logic app and it has another IOT and it has something else again. So now you, if you notice here in this scenario that I've just explained you, there are two IOT resources that you have provisioned. There are two, uh, there are two function apps, uh, sorry, logic apps that you have provisioned. Now there might be a chance that you might forget that, okay, this might be of project B or project A. You're not sure, right? Or B or C or C or A, whatever it is, you're not sure. So what you do initially itself, when you create the resource, you allocate it to a particular resource group, which is holding a project. So you will be saved from this confusion that, okay, which particular thing am I supposed to change? Or let's say you're a new developer joins your team. He's not sure how to work around with that. So even it is easier for him, you can say, okay, see, this is the resource group that I've created resource group a. So whatever you're working on, this is where you'll find all the resources. So he'll also be clear that is, this is where I have to search and not somewhere else. Right? So to clear confusions, there are something called as this resource groups. And uh, so there's something called as this marketplace, which we just saw. So yeah, this is that marketplace. Hmm. So marketplace is again, um, what can I say? It's again a place where you can explore a lot more other services. Trust me, there are, I don't even know how many services are existing here. So you can just click on see more, you can find thousands more services. And these services are not just offered by Microsoft, but also a couple of companies who give out their services on Microsoft Azure. So they're partnered here and they give out services. Like let's say a simple example, NVIDIA. Okay. NVIDIA is a company which we all know, right? It produces graphic cards and stuff, powerful geo, uh, GPUs and stuff. So they have, what they have done, this is managed by NVIDIA corporation and NVIDIA image for AI using GPU. So you can use this if you're using working on like, let's say some image related projects or like, let's say an AI, uh, what, what, what is that? Uh, computer vision related projects or something like that, right? So you can, you can use these powerful GPUs if you want. Then there is something, some other app robotic RPA, RPA robotic uh, process automation, and then blue prism intelligent. These are all given out by some other companies and see, there are a couple of softwares as well, which are given out by companies and you can just use them as a service. So again, it is considered under a software as a service. You can see which category does it come under. So this comes under a virtual machine. This particular BIND, this comes under Azure application. Uh, again, Azure application, virtual machine. You can see like, you know, marketplace has a lot of them. Okay. So the recent one that I had used comes under this. So I had used something called as, um, let me just search. Oh yeah. And keep, uh, be aware of this word called as deprecating. If something is under deprecation, try to avoid, uh, such things because they might be soon taken off the platform. Okay. So if it is deprecating, try to, you know, like stay a little away from them. Let's just see. Um, let me just search or else that's better. I guess. Forum. Mm -hmm. I said, I said, you right. I, I had used quorum uh, for my project. So yeah, see, this is again, a third party thing. It's hosted by a company called as consensus and it's a start kit. It's a dev start kit that I want. This will actually give me a blockchain at the back end, So I can, I can build my apps on that particular blockchain. So this is something that, you know, not exactly given out by Microsoft, but again, it's offered as a service for you on Microsoft Azure, right? So you can choose what you want and then you can click on create. So that is about the marketplace. So you can go ahead and, and see what are the other things. I'm pretty sure you can find a lot of solutions for your applications in the marketplace, right? Because, uh, I mean, the, the variety is so much that definitely you'll hit on something that you want, right? And, uh, just like, let's say if blockchain is something that is very naive right now, but look at the number of services that are already available and uh, compute, uh, like let's say IOT, what is there in IOT? Yeah. See, there are these many things and uh, mixed reality let's say see spatial anchors these are given to you by azure but see here
Mm, yeah, see? HCL has given, sorry, where is that go? Yeah, HCL. Here it is. HCL has given you something, VSI, hollow medicine, a lot of other things, right? HCL has given to you as an application itself. So, I mean, just look at the thing here. So, it's a new technology, but still there are a lot of options available. Imagine something like a web dev or something. What are the other options that are available? So I would, I just introduce you to this platform. I would suggest you guys to go ahead and explore each and every bit of this. But now, since we are running short of time, let's see quickly how to create a resource. As I, as I told you initially as well, doing anything here is like, you know, you're creating a resource, a resource is being created. So. I'll go ahead and uh, create a custom vision resource. So I have to go here. Uh, if it is not here, don't worry. You can just type here custom vision because I'm sure I want to create a custom vision resource. So I'm going here. Yeah, see, I, I found a custom vision resource. So plan it is saying custom vision. I'll show this in some time. So I'm clicking on create. Okay, so this is a thing that you will see most of the time when you're creating something uh, on Azure, any resource that you create, you'll see a form like this. Okay. You can call it a form or, or an application or whatever you want to call it. I call it as a form. So this is a thing that you will see usually. So if you, let's say the create, it will be different for various services. Like let's say custom vision has this, uh, let me just open a different service. Mm, let's say web, web app. Okay. I want to create a web app. So let's say a web. Okay, but I can go here. I can go here. I can create here. Yeah. See, this this is having a different set of the rules. You know, what should be a web app name? What should be a runtime stack? Uh, these are the available stacks. Should it be a Python, PHP, Node, Java, .NET, Ruby, whatever you want. And where where should you, where do you want to deploy that resource, right? And a lot of other things here. Then you can do this, but. This takes some time, so I'm stopping it here. This is just for you to understand. So let's see how to create one uh, custom vision. So you can choose your particular subscription that you're on. Mine is on Visual Studio Enterprise, so I'm choosing that. If you're a student, you will have um, student, I think, student subscription or something like that. And uh, if you're work, if you're having a credit card, uh, you have linked your credit card, then you'll have something related to that. So resource group, I think now you're familiar with what. So I'll I'll just give here as Azure demo. Okay, demo one. Okay, this is fine. It's happy now. So Azure demo one and uh, region. This is where your particular region. Uh, this is your. This is where your resource will be deployed. This is that place. This is that data center that you're choosing where you want to deploy. So since I'm in India, let me choose something related to India. Yeah, see, Central India. So it is always uh, preferable to choose something closest to your place. Not necessarily, but you can choose wherever you want. You can use West Europe as well. But I'll choose Central India for now. So the name, okay. I, I'll just give uh, Azure Demo itself as the name. Okay, it's happy, and the training resources are here. Um, okay, it's not. I'll just give twenty-two. In minute, okay, it's fine. So now the training pricing tier. As I told you, there are different different varieties, and you have to pay for anything you use. Okay, anything, uh, any resource that you uh, hire, you'll have to pay for that thing. Let's say like a rented house. You you take a rented house. You stay there, you pay for the uh, monthly the rent that you, you know, you're using their house. Similarly, here also you'll have to pay for uh, such thing. So now uh, there are some some services, um, again, some services, not all services. Some services have something called as free tire. Okay. So the, for example, here, let's say two transactions per second and there are two projects. Okay. This is a free tire and you won't be charged for this. Zero charging will be applicable. But there is something called a standard tier, which actually does 10 transactions per second and n number of projects. So this is something that will be charged for. Okay. So you can see the pricing details again. If you want to see how much will I be charged. So you can see that here it is. So zero to 1 million transactions, you will be having 75 rupees per thousand transactions, so on and so forth. There are, this is for deployment again. So S1 is something I will be using, right? S No, we are using S0. S0 is not here. Mm. Okay, no issues. We'll just see. This is just for you to give a brief idea of how things are. So S1 web container will have these charges incurred. And then free container will have no charges incurred. But you can do 5,000 transactions per month. That is the limit that is given to you. 
and if you are staying in some other state you can choose this right dollar one per thousand transaction so on and so forth so i'll be choosing a free tier here okay prediction pricing tier again the same trading and prediction is something you guys must be knowing in ai will be using that so again you can view the pricing here as well yeah see s1 free s2 s3 so now i am done filling this mm. yeah network all networks including the internet can access this resource i'll keep it to all every time and uh, then tax if you want to give something I, i'm not giving anything here and then you can click on this so now what happens here once you do this it will run a simple validation to see whether all the details that you have given is right or not or you know have you missed on some important uh, details for example if i if i don't give anything here in this name like let's say i give it blank but you can see that there is a red small star here right there's a small star which means that it's a compulsory field okay so if you don't if you miss out on something like this then the validation will be shown as failed or if there is some other small error in your filling or something like that it will again be showing you failed with the reason why is it failed right so but my validation here is again it's running the final validation let's see whether it is passed or failed okay i have successfully filled everything so it is giving me that it is passed so now i'll click on and there is summary here both visual studio enterprise uh central india azure demo 22 uh training tier is this um pricing tier is this and uh, type uh, all networks can access this. this is summary so now i'll just click on this particular button which says create okay so now it is initializing the deployment so i think you must be knowing what goes on in the back end here right when i do something like this it goes to all the way to that particular data center and uh, then there's an hypervisor that you know allocates a particular thing and then it goes to a server and then you'll get that thing a server is allocated your resource is being allocated so basically this all happens in this background okay when you click on this create so it all the way goes to that particular server and then it goes to that particular that particular hypervisor looks into every single fact that is there and then it it allocates a, sing, a server that is vacant there and then it gives you that thing back so all this will take some time but look at the speed that microsoft uh, has so by the time i was just explaining you what goes in the back end it gave me a resource um it gave me this thing that yeah the resource is ready now you can use it it's yours right so okay i have two azure 22 demo prediction let's say i'll, I'll just go with one now and uh, you can find all your keys and endpoints here so if you want to see the keys you can click on this don't try to copy this i'll be deleting this after this uh, particular uh, webinar okay and uh, the endpoint again is shown here and the region is also shown so this is something that you will have to note down when you are working on something let's say integration if you want to ap if you want to create an api call from your local web app to this you'll have to have this keys ready with you okay and uh, let's say an overview what is there okay this is there api key let's say i want to jump to this portal custom vision portal i think training will take time so this is how you create one i've created one before for one of my previous projects so i'll show you that mm -hmm. oh god which one was that okay I'll, I'll just see one okay this is how you go to that particular portal where you want to work okay Mm, yeah so let's say i've done something called as a brand detection here okay so now what i'll do i'll, I'll just load this project this is already trained if you only can train it again so nothing much i've just taken a kfc thing here starbucks and and zara and a couple of other brands so this is something i was testing out so uh now what i'll do i'll just give it a quick test it is trained already everything is ready so now let's say I want to find some pick related to Zara. Okay. So I'll, I'll just take this copy. Okay. Wait, let me open this, not this. I'm sorry. Open image in a new tab. Okay. So I'll, I've copied this URL and what I'll do, I'll just paste it here and I'll just see. Okay. See, it fetched the thing from there. Now it is running. So now we can see that um, it has given me with a 43% probability that it is Zara 
and 39.4 percent that it is starbucks 16.6 percent that it is kfc okay so now let's see something let's find it for kfc again okay um yeah this looks good when imagine a new tab i'll again copy oh my god this is right wait refresh okay um yeah here i'll paste this and i'll try it again so it is running the model now oh okay it's svg so it's not supporting um let me open this one it fetch the image see it is showing you with a 93 percent accuracy that it is kfc and uh Starbucks is six point. Of course, it's not Zara. So, of course, here it's very evident that it is for KFC. Don't worry. The uh, previous results were because I had trained a very minimal amount of images. And when you are training something for this, especially if you're working in the field of AI, so you must be knowing that after a lot of training, after a lot of validations itself, your accuracy increases. Imagine giving this ten images. That is nowhere uh, sufficient for. Uh, such uh, classification models. So I'm run I was running a classification model. But the best part here is I hadn't coded anything to get that accuracy. If you have noticed, I was just doing it right in front of you, however I did, right? So browse, sorry, not this. Clicking on this. See, I did everything right in front of you. So this is the power that Microsoft Azure provides us, right? So you just saw how to create a resource. You just saw how to go around with that. And if you want to make something different. Like if you want to make a web API call, as I told you, you need those keys and endpoints. Let's say you want to do it in Python. So you can click on this. You can read this documentation on how exactly do you go around and do it with Python, right? And uh, trying to build an application, so on and so forth. So basically, this is your resource that was created for you. So similarly, you can go ahead and create virtual machines. You can create your web apps. You can host your web apps. You can you can do anything on Azure, right? Anything as a student or as a developer or as anything else, right? You can do literally anything on Microsoft Azure. If you want to create an API, then boom, here it is. Logic Apps, right? You can go ahead, click on Add, and then, okay, it'll take some time. Yeah, see, you can, you can just fill this form out and then you're good to go. So this is how you can leverage Microsoft Azure in your projects and, uh, so now, since you have learned all these things, now there might be a question that, okay, I want to re refer to some resources. Where do I go? Okay. Uh, head on to Microsoft Azure, powerapps.com. As I told you, I didn't, this session was not on Power Apps, So I didn't go to cover much on Power Apps. I just gave a brief introduction of what is it. So learn, explore option, tutorials, Microsoft use cases. There are a couple of YouTube channels like Microsoft Developer, Microsoft Reactor, a lot more other channels where you can see uh, experts come out there and then give out their, uh, you know, experience tutorials and many other things then there is microsoft learn platform which i would definitely suggest everyone should try it out so microsoft learn is a platform where uh, microsoft experts and a uh, couple of other people uh, give out their uh, content and there is content literally on everything okay i, can, I just I, th I think i have time just to show you how that looks like so microsoft learn you can go here and uh, see what others are learning and these are all your learning paths that are available for you right the one that i told you is this one this is something that i had authored and uh, yeah see this is the whole set of learning path that you can follow and i think this is where you can yeah see there's the same image i i showed you how to go around everything is explained here so this is that platform of microsoft learn so with that, I would like to conclude this session on Microsoft Azure. I, I hope it was helpful for all of you. I did not just uh, focus more on the uh, theoretical side, but of course, I think I was able to give you some practical insights as well. So with that, I would like to conclude the session. Thank you for having me uh, in the session. And uh, yeah, that's it from my side. So I think it was a very nice session. Thank you very much. If you have any kind of queries, you guys can directly put them in the chat and our mentor will be more than happy to help you with the things. And if you are not having any kind of doubt right now, you can also 
connect with the mentor on linkedin so he'll be happy to help you there as well yeah so i don't think there are any other doubts so i must say thank you very much sir for coming here and taking out your time and explaining the concept so well and one more thing one compliment from my side your ppt was just amazing it was so amazing means the colors were also very nice and the things were uh, if it's possible uh, please share that ppt with me it would be really very helpful for me and the audience i'll share with the audience as well if they demand and Definitely. thank you very much sir we hope to see you in the other broadcast as well with uh, another topics and you took the session from very basics to very advanced level thank you very much for coming here and giving your time and delivering the precious knowledge to all our attendees thank you guys thank for you. being such a lovely audience and you can connect with the mentor any time on linkedin till then stay safe uh, tata bye bye good night